from your experiences dealing with Americans, do the American political establishment really have a correct, thorough understanding of China's politics? Do the Chinese political establishment have a correct understanding of US politics so that both countries can find ways to coexist, uh, uh, at least peacefully, not going to a hot war. I'll start with Kishore. Well, let, let, me, let me answer the question about whether or not the American establishment has a good understanding of uh, China. And the simple answer is no. <laughs> there is a tremendous amount of ignorance. And actually, one man who privately confirmed this to me um, was then America's greatest living uh, strategic thinker, uh, Henry Kissinger. Uh, I had a conversation with him one-on-one -on -one in October 2022, I guess about a year before he died. And we were discussing U.S.-China relations. As you know, he's the one who gave me the insight on which I built my book, Has China Won? That the U.S. has launched a geopolitical contest against China, but it hasn't worked out a comprehensive long-term strategy. And why hasn't it worked out a comprehensive long-term strategy? Because it doesn't understand China. <laughs> it doesn't realize that actually mm -hmm. China is a much more formidable competitor than anything that the United States has experienced. And the big problem in the United States is that opinion is often made, especially in the East Coast, by the liberal pundits. And the liberal pundits just assume that because China is run by a Chinese Communist Party and the liberal pundits believe that all Communist parties will eventually fail and therefore the Chinese Communist Party will fail and the United States will win. I mean, this is an incredibly naive belief but that's what they all believe, shockingly. And they haven't tried to understand the reality of China. And so when the U.S. Congress set up a committee on the strategic competition between the United States and China, there's no doubt there's a strategic competition between the United States and China. What do they name the committee? Mm -hmm. They said, this is a committee on the strategic competition between the United States of America and the Chinese Communist Party. <laughs> and I told them, this is not a contest between the United States and the Chinese Communist Party. This is the contest between the United States and Chinese civilization, which has only been around 4,000 years. So do you understand the nature of the contest you're engaged in? And the honest answer is they don't, which is sad. And this is puzzling because in theory, America is an open society. But I say the paradox about American society is that when it comes to China, United States is an open society with a closed mind. Do you think the, the Chinese leadership gets the Americans? Well, I, I would say this. Huh? If the Chinese leadership is not feeling confused about the state of American politics, then there's something wrong with the Chinese leadership. <laughs> they should be confused. <laughs> because every, all of us are confused, right? There's something, there's something about American politics which has always been unpredictable. That's a reality. Because the American system is so open domestically, nobody can make predict outcomes. But at the same time, what we have today in the United States is even by American standards, an unprecedented level of unpredictability. And therefore, it would be natural for the Chinese leadership to be confused by the United States of America. Uh, two very good questions. I would say uh, in relative comparative studies, I would say perhaps the Chinese on the whole understand the West, including the United States, 10 times better than the West knows about China. For one thing, we have uh, more than 3 million students who have studied or are still studying in the West. 
eighty-five percent have returned home, and they know foreign languages, know Western cultures, and no realities. And uh, more specifically, if you look at the say at this particular moment, this key foreign policy decision makers like uh, uh, Blinken or Sullivan, etc., they look at their educational background. They were the generation of um, uh, winning the Cold War, as they were trained in the American-style political science. I did my study in Geneva University. At that time, we were debating whether we should have a political science or political studies. And 50-50, when you emphasize political studies, you are thinking of uh, this particular field, not science yet. We have to lay a lot of emphasis on history, on philosophy. But the United States, the post-Cold War education in international relations, in political science, is essentially no doubt about the, this end of history. Western liberal democracy has won, you know. So it's very ideological. So what remains is mathematics, you know, models. You know. As a result, they misread China, misread Southeast Asia, misread outside the world, and misread the United States. Sometimes we say it's a pseudoscience, not a real science. So on this background, I would say perhaps China and Chinese leaders know the West better, the United States better. Another important thing is our education in international relations in political science strongly influenced by the United States. Yet, the overall philosophy for China's rise and reform and opening up is what we call the seeking truth from facts, So that has helped China to avoid a lot of mistakes. Whatever the theory, we do not believe in dogmas. We believe in checking facts. So we find that Soviet model, not working very well. American model, not working very well. We start to explore our own model. So I'm slightly optimistic on the Chinese side.